Research question is the starting point of a research study. Research process then refers to the process or set of actions through which the researcher answers the research question. The book lists several different types of research questions, but generally a research question is any question that we might answer by doing research. And uh, typically they are in the form of, of what causes something or what is the effect of something. They might be some kind of description like what kind of strategies there exist or they might be more interpretive like how do employees perceive or experience the implementation of new pay for performance program for example. When we state a research question it is important to understand what kind of questions science can answer and what kind of questions science cannot answer. So scientific research generally focuses on answering questions that can be settled with data. So questions of existence for example are beyond the realm of science and should not be tried to answer with the scientific method or research. For example a classic question that is a non-scientific question is whether God exists. We cannot prove the non-existence of anything. We can just say that we don't have any evidence to settle the debate. God might exist, God might not exist, that is beyond the realm of science. Another type of question that is the beyond the realm of science is questions of morality. For example, if we were asking whether companies should maximize profits or whether they should maximize the well-being of the society, that is a question of values and it is often considered to be in beyond the scope of science. This book by Singleton Estrades gives an example of pornography. So we might ask a question of what determines if a person watches porn or not. That is a scientific question. We go collect data, do interviews, do surveys and find out some facts about porn viewing habits. But asking whether pornography is wrong or whether it's against the will of God for example would be beyond the, uh, the scope or the domain of science because that is not a question that can be settled with data. That's more about values and ethics. So a research question is any question that we can answer by collecting data and establishing facts through the research process. So what is research process then? This is a, an example of research pro process. You can find this kind of diagrams in many different research methods books, but this is my favorite. It comes from Singleton Estrades. The research process starts by picking a research topic. So we might pick a topic generally, for example, pay for performance programs. That is our topic. We might have opportunity identification as a topic in entrepreneurship, or we might have employee well-being as a topic for human resources. And after we have picked the topic, what we would do is to study a, a bit, read what has been done around that topic already to make sure that our question is something that hasn't been fully answered yet. And then we are, uh, from the topic, we derive the more specific research question. That is the question that our study is trying to answer. Then the next thing that we do is uh, we prepare our research design. So the research design is the overall plan of how we want to answer our research question. The research design typically includes two main elements. We have the sampling, that is what are the units that we, we study. Do we study people? Do we study organizations? Do we study teams? Do we study projects? Whatever. What is the unit of analysis in your study? Then uh, the second uh, aspect is measurement, which refers to what are the aspects of those units that we study. For example, if we study companies, we might study or measure their innovativeness and measure their performance. If we study people, we might measure, for example, the job satisfaction and we might measure their uh, level of work family conflict and then try to make some kind of uh, relationship within those things that we measure. Of course, measurement and sampling also concern the practicalities, like how do we actually go and collect the data. But this is, these are the two things that we need to focus on. Then we collect the data. It can be uh, with interviews, it can be a survey, we can do observations, we can get data from a database, and then follows the data processing and analysis. 
After analysis, we interpret the results and we write up the study. So this is how the research process is often explained. And an important thing to understand is that when you think about whether your study is any good, what does determines the quality of the study, it is mostly determined here before any data collection takes place. So if you collect data that are bad, or if you ask a research question that is uh, not worth asking, then you really cannot salvage the project by doing fancy analysis and nice reporting. So what is your question? What is your data? That is what determines the quality of the study. So this is how research process is typically presented, but it is not how it typically goes. There's quite a lot of iteration in reality. For, there are four stars, for example, when I did my, my doctoral thesis, I think I went through five different research questions before I ended up picking the one that I eventually answered. When I do a master's thesis, there was less iteration because there's more time pressure. But the idea is the same. You, you read some of the literature on the topic, then you pick a question, then you evaluate that question. You perhaps ask your supervisor if the question makes sense, and then you go back and then you revise the research question. This happens in all master's thesis projects that I've supervised, which is quite a few. And it's like two or three different starts before you actually get to the real question. Then uh, we also have iteration in data collection when you analyze the data. Let's assume you've done 10 interviews in a company and you start analyzing the data. You realize that you forgot to ask a few important questions. Then you need to go back to the case. You can either book additional interviews or you can call the company and ask for, for more information about the case. The iterative nature of research is, is very much present in many books on qualitative research, which emphasize that your data collection and data analysis must go hand in hand. So it doesn't really happen that you full, first collect all the data and then you analyze the data and you realize that your data were perfect. It doesn't work that way, but the analysis guides data collection. The same happens in uh, quantitative research as well. For example, I was uh, working on a project on work family conflict and uh, we had one, one study over three years and what we eventually ended up having after analyzing the data was an article that consisted of five, consisted of five different studies with five different time lags. We were looking at work family conflict over uh, days, weeks, months, six month period and, and over, three, over three years. So whenever you collect data, it doesn't necessarily stop there when you have the first data that you started analyzing, there is iteration. And sometimes you go back to the drawing board. So you do a study and you realize that the study didn't really work out. And then you're back to step zero, picking the research project uh, or the research topic. Uh, this is what our book refers to messiness of business research. So it is all this iteration that goes on all these four starts Typically, in a research article, we present just the final out outcome because that is what people normally care about. But there is uh, now uh, a trend where this iteration should also be reported. But typically, you find the iteration presented in online supplements. Like you might have a, a data collection diary in an online supplement that explained how your data collection actually evolved. And then it's a summarize that you collected data in, for example, 24 cases in the main article.